All righty. So if you are tuning into this at some point in the future on YouTube, uh, my name is Daz. This is Yash. We are meeting for the first time. We met two minutes ago for the first yeah. time. And uh, Yash and I have both been through quite a journey, it appears, in healing ticks and Tourette's. And um, we're going to hear our journeys today, our stories. And this is going to be just quite a unfiltered, uncensored conversation about ticks and Tourette's and how we've got here and wherever else it might take us, this conversation. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, man. So nice to connect with you. Yeah, totally, man. So, There's not many people uh, uh, doing this. You know, I, I, as you know, I have three channels and um, the Tourette channel, it's ironic. That what I, that's what I thought would be my main channel, but it's actually um, the channel that I'm least focused on because it's like there's no audience, not really for the uh, holistic solutions you know now there's a big audience if i was to talk about you know deep brain surgery and pharmaceutical meds and how bad tourette's is and how to live with it uh because you can't do anything about it and yeah. and all that but um yeah it was it's a little disheartening like the people that when you talk about holistic methods or diet or or the techniques that you give it's like yeah, the openness just isn't there. And I understand totally, especially if you have severe, you know, severe Tourette's because, and, and yeah, I mean, there's so much to say, like in those cases, yeah, though, it's just a real heavy thing, man, this, this Tourette syndrome. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. I mean, it can be, man, it can be so gruesome, you know. Uh, it can, and it is, right? And um, yeah, I mean, I, I I don't know if you had it different to me or your experience of having the condition was different than me, but um, uh, I'd love to share my experience of living with it. And maybe if you want to share your experience of living, living with it so that others then can relate and feel into like what we both went through. Um, yeah. Because it was, it was, it was, it was, oh, I'm just tuning in right now. Ah. <sighs> I lived for a long time with just this tension on my arm like this, just like tension, tightness, this constant movement, Yash. It was like, it started in my nose, like, like this for years and years in my teens, about 13 it started for me. And then because I wanted to push it down or suppress it or hold it in or hold the emotions or I didn't want to connect to the, whatever was associated with it, it kind of moved to my neck like this. And then I was doing my neck for ages, right? For freaking years, like my neck was like this. <laughs> but again, I was holding it down. I was trying, oh, I don't want anybody to see me. No, okay, I've got to hold it. I've got to hold it in. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people do this. They just suppress and repress and hold because they don't want to be seen like this in the world that we live in. So uh, a lot of pain there. And then just gradually over time, like, I, cause I just suppressed and repressed all of this energy that just wanted to move through me. Like it all was with my whole arm for like, I don't know, after that 10, 15 years. Um, so for me, it was very localized on the right hand side of my body, like neck, nose, hands, wrist, constant twitching like this thousands of times every day um and you know what just speaking to somebody who's been through it right now in this moment and and being seen and felt by you because you also have been on this crazy journey of moving through this <laughs> it's like it feels yeah. so good to share it feels yeah. good to share and it's something i talk about a lot on, on my channel and my courses just share i talk about it share it express it because it helps so much to move beyond it um and yeah and then i found a whole bunch of different holistic and natural tools similar to maybe yourself which i'd love to hear about like over the course of your journey to or my journey to 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 rid myself yeah how was your condition man like what was it like what was the feeling like how did it move through you yeah did you 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 did did you take a glimpse at my other channels the semen retention and the i did uh, i did yeah, yeah. okay cool. So you, you understand then what, um, yeah, I was diagnosed at seven and it's like, uh, I wrote a book and I kind of took it off the shelf because I don't know, 
uh, I wrote it years ago, but I described it as a bunch of ants, like biting a certain spot and there's nothing I can do about it. And, and something, every time I tick, it's like a way to kind of uh, throw the ants off for like a half a second. And then I got to do it again and again and again. <clears throat> And my, mine was more localized to my neck also, although I had all kinds, I would grab my groin, I would scrape my nose until it would like bleed and then just keep doing it. That's what I mean. I mean, it's a super yeah. debaucherous, torturous, self-tortured thing, you know? Yeah. And, uh, the, and then they gave me Haldol when I was seven. I mean, it's just insane to give such a, the, the, some of these things, Haldol, Rasperdol, Abilify, they're stronger than a lot of street drugs out there. And they were, and they're just, uh, the side effects are insane. I could never do them, but at the same time, I <clears throat> understand if somebody has to do them because I've been there, it gets so bad. Like you can't, there's different degrees of this. And, um, you've talked in a video before about, uh, a movement disorder and yeah, there's a difference for sure between a movement disorder and like full blown Tourette's, you know, um, I, I got to where I couldn't walk down the road. I was twitching and ticking so bad. I just needed help. I was about 22 and I started taking Xanax. And that really chilled me because that's the whole point. The nervous system has to chill. My nervous system was so amped up and um, this electrical currents are firing everywhere. And I just can't, you, you can't do nothing about it. And that's what I mean. You get to a point to where there's no like, okay, just relax now. You're, you're like in a full-blown convulsion almost, except it's conscious, you know. I talked to that guy that you might have seen his videos. They did a big news thing on him. He got deep brain stimulation. They show before and after. I had times like that, like what he had. And so I, I just spent my whole life trying to, I didn't get family. I didn't really get a trade. This is my trade, what I do on YouTube. I, I was totally devoted to trying to find a cure because my life was just total hell. And I couldn't take, if I could have taken this pharmaceutical drugs, I can't really call them medicine, but if I took those things and they actually worked a little bit, I probably would have just continued down there, but they just was a hundred percent bad. And so I just started and exhausted my search in America, biofeedback and Reiki and all kinds of spiritual practices and meditations. And I'm like, I gotta, I gotta broaden my search. And I started combing the planet. And went to Thailand and India and got a bunch of body work done and went to a, a John of God in Brazil. I went to India trying to find a guru, tried all this Ayurvedic treatment. Then I went to China and got holistic surgery done because I also have cervical dystonia. And that in the, in the Tourette's, they just play off each other. Cervical dystonia is when there's constant muscle spasms in your neck. It's like the nervous system keeps sending the signal that, you, that there's stress, even though there's not. And so there's this constant tightening up and then that triggers the tick. And then the two, it just spirals into this just uh, positive feedback loop that could last who knows how long, you know? I mean, people can damage and break bones because you just, it's become so violent. And so I tried all these things and nothing was really working, got deep into raw foods and water fasting and dry fasting and fruitarian and all this stuff. And then some psychedelic medicine uh psilocybin ayahuasca san pedro see all that stuff has its place i was really good when i was doing the plant medicine while i was doing it but once it got metabolized a few days later the ticks would come back and you can't do this medicine all the time it's too strong <laughs> so yeah yeah you just too much man and so just to summarize my ingredients today and this is what my channels are about and um it's not a promotion thing, you know, it's just, I'm, I'm sharing what works. If I would have heard somebody give solutions when I was looking, oh, I'd have been all over it. That's what kind of amazes me today. It's like, I started a, a channel, um, Awakening Through Pain. Uh, it's about Tourette's and cervical dystonia. And there's just not much of a following there, you know, but I understand, I can understand. So the things I need energy, bottom line, my nervous system needs energy. I have a weaker sensitive nervous system just by default. And I need energy. I need to preserve as much energy as possible. And I do that in a few ways. I preserve my semen. It's called semen retention because I used to not I used to, you know, look at porn and masturbate and et cetera, because it was a great escape mechanism from this self torture I was in. But later I realized that was making my nervous system even weaker. So I had to stop that. 
And that's, that's a huge way. The semen's extremely powerful. I'm not parroting things I read in the book. I'm telling you from actual experience, like the, the, the difference when I'm doing that and not is huge. And then my body sends that energy to the nervous system. It's intelligent. It knows what to do. The other thing is diet. This is huge. We spend so much energy digesting foods. I've, I've realized this. I drink liquids all day pretty much coconut water. I'm in Ecuador. I get a lot of good fruits and, and coconut water. I also make tonics with essential oils from Young Living. It's another level. It's essential oils. When I, I put it in a mason jar at night, I make like six actually. I let it sit all night and it brews and marinates and structures. And then when I drink it in the morning, it's like drinking pure electricity. That goes straight to my nervous system and just balances things. So I'm drinking these high potent uh, liquid easy to digest foods all day that requires almost no digestive energy so I, I'm not spending energy on that and at the same time I'm getting energy from the foods and then I would say the last thing is stress I really have, have to cultivate a lifestyle that doesn't put I'm not compromising myself with company environment etc we can feel inside when we're compromising and I can't do that like people with this kind of nervous system we can't afford to compromise. Maybe others can get away with it. But if I, if I do that, I pay the price. All of a sudden, the, the urge to tick comes, the, the imbalance is felt. Like most of us are super sensitive people. And so we have to structure a life around that if we want to be happy. Uh, okay. <laughs> the sensitivity I can definitely relate to. Like yeah. the sensitivity of like the nervous systems of those of us that have this condition. Like you know there, there's a blessing behind it in a way because there's a way yeah. of seeing the world and ourselves that uh, can be so beautiful but we have to move through this uh, atrocious depths of shadow and darkness in order to actually experience the light on the other side you know yeah. uh, and so it's really beautiful hearing yeah the, the three tools that you use the diet the semen retention and just cultivating a lifestyle, a lifestyle, lifestyle. You, you ensure that your environment is and supports relaxation yeah. and less stress. Yeah. 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 And, and we and we don't do it. Like for many years for me in London, I I I compromised myself again and again and again. It's like I need to work, I need to get a job, I need money, I need to, I need to go out and date, I need to do this, I need to yeah. make this thing happen. I, I was just constantly pushing myself. I know. It's like we, we, we got to go through that. It's like we got to burn those desires out to see that they're, they're, they're not, they don't do anything. You know, I know. I know. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, burning those desires out. And that's it. That's the, yeah. also what we're doing here karmically as well. If we look at it from a spiritual perspective, isn't it? Sure. Um, I think maybe a lot of people who are watching this channel at the beginning aren't necessarily connected or aware of or have found necessarily the spirit aspect of their life if they're so dense in their body with a condition like this that's the thing it's it's, it's like if somebody if somebody's starving with food you can't really talk to them about meditation i mean let, let's give them some food first that, that's why yeah it's difficult it's like the spiritual solution is is the solution but yet the body has to get into a semblance bal of balance so that we can even begin to receive something like that that's why that's why my other channel, The Spiritual Renaissance, when we talk about non-duality, I'm kind of almost always making fun of these uh, non-dual, you know, pe people who are just speaking from the mind, you know, and I say sometimes if they had any kind of chronic situation, <laughs> they wouldn't be, um, yeah, they're, they're going to, you're going to find out how deep these principles really are. Because, you know, they just say everything's a thought, the body's a thought, everything's a thought, you don't need to worry about anything. And no, I've found in order to really, they all go together. It's all interconnected. You know, I got to, I got to, especially when you have a chronic situation like this, you really got to take care of the bodies because we're living in this thing. The consciousness is in these bodies. It's, it's home. You know, it's like driving a, a broken car with flat tires and, and, and everything. Like you got to fix the car a little bit so you can, you know, not obsess about it, but get it running so that then you can actually not be thinking about it all the time. You know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you remind me then of uh, Eckhart Tolle. He like, uh, like he's a beautiful him. teacher, but he's very in his mind. It's very mind spirituality, and, he, and his intellect super uh, developed. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, he has really developed into. I do feel his. Uh, I do feel his vibration though. Uh, he, you know, he's he's. he's huh? Yeah, he's a yeah. he's a master. He's taught so many people here for sure. Um, mm. But there's many of us that need different teachings. Um, oh, totally. More embodied now on the planet, given the totally. depth of the pain that we have created in the culture of our society. It's like that's the thing. We're living in a world where it's the stress of anxiety is running rife. Tens of millions of people are just pumping themselves with pharmaceuticals, and it's yeah. like, what are we doing here? Like, what are we doing here? No wonder everybody's ill. And a lot of people don't realize they're ill. They just think it's normal to live in the state of anxiety every I day. I know, especially in the West. I mean, you know, you can probably agree in Thailand, it's, it's a little less uh, mental illness, collectively speaking. Sure. Yeah, here too. Yeah, that's why I love, the, I love the developing countries, man. For me, the third world is the first world. I mean, it's, I, 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 wouldn't, I don't want to live in the West, America, Canada, Europe, Australia. I don't any of those places. I like, I like Asia or South America. Like, it's just the freedom that's in the atmosphere. There's no martial law. And there's just so much less mental illness. And more people are coming. They're more heart-centered. They don't have this overly developed, restless intellect that just thinks it can do, you know, obsessed uh, with, with living out of their mind everything is just seen through mind there's no connection here it's just all mind you know and yeah that gets old it's it, and it's it's uh it's unhealthy it's uh for a nerve for a person that has a weak nervous system if we're around that energy we'll feel it it's just something's restless as opposed to if we're around a villager who's just centered in the heart it's like oh i'm relaxed no you know Something I do notice with working with people who have tics one-on-one -on, -one on Zoom calls, right, mm -hmm. is, um, is, and I can relate to myself with this, of course, for like many, many years, is the density of my mind and the density of those that have tics and how deeply ingrained their experience of mind is versus body, which is fascinating, isn't it? Because it's the, the body which is moving, the body which is ticking, the body which is like, like crying out for attention, like, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. And yet we're like, mind, mind, mind. Because for me, I didn't know there was anything beyond the mind, right? Yeah. I didn't know that it, because I thought my experience of the body, like my experience of the body back then in my teens and twenties was through the mind. So yeah. when somebody said leg to me, connect with your leg, I'm like, yes, leg, mental model, leg, okay. But my experience of my leg now is, embodied it's like it's here like my yeah. energy my awareness my consciousness my focus is here and yeah. i'm with the leg i'm in the leg i'm feeling the muscle right. the hair the ligaments right. i'm in right. the body and that shift yeah. of awareness right is is something which i i share again and again because we don't realize we can do it <laughs> right yeah it's just a matter of cultivating we just got to be conscious you know we need just need somebody to bring this up and and then um, it'd be nice if all of our company was on that same page like in a higher golden age this this will all be normal and natural but right now it's uh yeah it's like a big deal like we got to learn the obvious again you know it's it's a trip yeah hmm. Hmm. you um the ash you started sharing earlier on when we first got on the call about psychedelics because uh, I too have had some really beautiful experiences um, using psychedelic medicine for transformation and growth. Um, yeah, what was your experience? Your first, the first, the first trip you experienced was magic mushrooms, was it, or something else? It, yeah, it was with mushrooms. I was in Thailand actually, and. I got I, I smoked weed when I was 12 to 15. I when I was 12, I was finally old enough to say I'm not taking this psychotropic drugs anymore. I don't care what the doctors or family say. And then my friend is like, you hey, bro, try this. And he gave me a blunt and I smoked it and I was laughing my ass off. And I was like, this is awesome. But after a few years, I burnt out on it. I felt like I was losing my mind. Weed has never been my medicine, actually. I have a, I'm like allergic to it. I get a really bad. It doesn't relax me. It stimulates the heck out of my nervous system. So I felt like I was losing my mind. And at 15 and a half, God must have grace helped me and said, you need to go to a rehab. 
and I found a rehab in the yellow in the yellow pages and told my mom I need to go here because um I really thought I was losing my mind. So I got clean and sober, and I didn't touch any drugs or anything. I was I was clean and sober for like well since then, but it, so I had like twenty five years, and so and I was going to NA meetings. I love the fellowship and twelve steps. I'm actually I'm a big proponent of that, especially people that have even Tourette's and any chronic situation. Chronic means it's probably not going to get healed and it could even continue to get worse some some cases. And there's a program, Chronic Pain Anonymous. And um, sometimes I send people there and also Sex Porn Addicts Anonymous for people who, who can't stop acting out sexually. There's so many good 12-step programs and you're in the, uh, the fellowship and it just helps you. Anyway, so I had this thing like I had 25 years clean sober I'm like but I felt the intuition to try mushrooms I don't know why it just came and I'm like oh, I don't know but then that means I relapse I had a little conditioning it's positive conditioning but still conditioning but then the intuition won I said okay I'm gonna try it I went down to the reggae bar I got a shake I said I don't want to drink it there I'm gonna take it home because I want to use it as a as a as a medicine for my meditation Oh man, dude. I mean, it was like the best thing I've ever done in my life. I mean, I was like, holy shit, why did I wait so long to try this? That's really my experience. It was off the charts good. And I was in my natural state. And I, I was like, this is how you're supposed to feel. Like, this is how you're supposed to feel. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's just everything's balanced. Like, this is what, and I was looking out the window and I like, everybody looked like a cyborg. Like they're so looking like they're busy doing something, but going nowhere. And I'm like, oh God, am I going to look like that after this wears off? <laughs> you know? And I was just super happy about it. And I was very grateful I found it. I had the same exact experience when I tried ayahuasca and San Pedro. For me, all three are pretty much the same. And there's... I would say I made videos on this too. I don't know if you've seen them, but there's two main things the plant medicine does. It can bring up suppressed issues or trauma that I'm not looking at because I'm so in my mind, there's no quiet to actually introspect. So it's like a fast track to therapy. It can accelerate things, but you should be ready. This is the thing, you know, that's why people I recommend do it with the shaman or, or somebody that knows what they're doing. It can really bring up this stuff that may be causing is serving as an obstruction for you to actually come back down in the heart and, and be uh, balanced. These, these issues are kind of rolling around, you know, what did my mom or dad do to me or, or who knows, whatever. So all that can come up. It can, that's one thing it does. And the other thing it can, we can really glimpse our natural state. It can show us, it can just bypass all this whole human condition and show us who we are just as consciousness what we were before we took this body and what's the, what we're going to be when this body leaves. It can just show us that. Those are the two main things that I feel it does. And, and, but the thing is, there's no get out of jail free card. I can't, I can't use it as, as a um, spiritual bypass or as a, as a quick fix. You see, it's like the universe doesn't allow it. I got to still do the work while in a with a sober mind and that's what i realized because i wanted to bypass all that and i realized i couldn't because every time once the chemistry got metabolized i would still kind of these old habits would come back so it can be a tool it is a tool for sure but the inner work has to be done like in real time as a daily practice it's not a one and you're done thing it's it's a thing that we the most important thing and has to be in my life to to know who I am beyond this body. This this has to be the most important thing, especially when you suffer with such a health health situations. It just re, nothing less is going to suffice. Like I really got to go beyond my body because when you're suffering with something like this, you have to go beyond your body to realize who you are. And then in that space, when you know who you are, there's some kind of I don't know, grace that it bleeds through into your body. It balances your body. Yeah. And, um, you know, like that. Yeah. I love, um, I love the way you express and you share and you talk. So I can deeply relate to so much of what you're sharing. And I really deeply relate to it and the way you see it and the way you uh, see the relationship between the density of this condition and what we are beyond that. I remember the first time I did, 
magic mushrooms and I, I, I didn't take them until I was in my early thirties and I was in Thailand. Yeah. I remember going to Pai in Northern Thailand and finding a bar with a, a beautiful woman that I met on Tinder called Charm. And she had taken them there at the same time, I think like a month before. And so I felt safe and held and there wasn't many people around. We were in like surrounded by paddy fields. And I remember mm -hmm. drinking this drink, a disgusting tasting drink. <laughs> uh, and, and feeling the onset of this, just this wash and warmth of just love emanating through my being of like you described it, just what a natural state can be like. This is a natural state. This, can be the natural state. This is the natural fabric, the attributes of the consciousness that I exist in as and of. And why am I in so much stress and worry and anxiety all the time? Yeah. And as this kind of love washed over me, <laughs> I just started laughing and I was just yeah. giggling for like four hours at the absurdity <laughs> of who I was, at how ridiculous and serious I thought life was because it's not. Yeah. <laughs> I got to yeah. the point where it was because I needed to get it right. I needed to do stuff. I needed to go here. I needed to make money to get a job. I needed to help people. I needed to, to, to do this. I needed to do that. Like what this doing archetype of this kind of Western person, this injured masculinity that we have here today on the planet. And it's like, why? let it go and like the mushrooms just like giggled out a whole bunch of this stuff which set me on a a beautiful path and then within about a year i had taken ayahuasca in in down in south america and that was a, a whole nother experience as well with the shaman and a, a much maybe a deeper one but like like you said the medicines aren't a one-off fix they can, they can help you see, they can help you peer out the window of the building. And go, oh my God, there's something else there. There's another way of living that isn't what I've known for the, all of my life. <laughs> and so yeah. like, okay, well, I want to get there and I want to live there all the time now. How do I get there? And then that is the path. That is the spiritual path, which like both of us have been using and the practices and the tools to go inwards to see that we're beyond this. We're beyond just this this thing this meat and bad bone thing <laughs> yeah yeah the contrast when you feel the contrast of yeah being locked in this heavy mental concept of being just a body and then you feel the lightness yeah that'll make you laugh for sure because the contrast is huge you're like holy shit you know <laughs> yeah yeah hmm. No, it's a great experience. Unfortunately, most, many never experience that. From day one till they die, all they know is this dense, heavy outfit that we're wearing, you know? I mean, so many people, they don't even know. They just don't know. And especially when you have any kind of chronic uh, health situation or neurological disorder, because your attention is on that all the time. Is it all you can just, oh, how's it going to be today? Am I going to... You know, and it's just from the time you wake up to you go to bed, it's like, you know, it centers around this imbalance in the body. It's a it's a hell of a karmic thing. You know, it's it's too bad. I used to I used to spiral these stories through my mind all the time, again and again, over and over, like like, oh, why am I doing this? I hate this. Like, mm -hmm. is anybody looking at me? Um, uh, like the embarrassment, like I feel like the embarrassment of just being me for doing what I was doing, right? Yeah. Like those cycles, it was kind of these, it was like, you know, non-playing character, like an NPC, like a droid, right? It was like I was just playing that same pattern, you know, in yeah. yeah, like for those watching, like in the computer game, when you just see that one character walking up and down the street. You know, yeah, yeah. it was a similar thing in my mind. I was just playing out the same thing again yeah. and again and again. And I look back and I, I did that for years. Oh, yeah. so piercing the illusion of that. And you expressed this a moment ago, piercing the illusion of the stories and the patterns that we play out is pierced by giving ourselves space to come back to ourselves, isn't it? And to relax the nervous system. 
to slow down the mind, to become more embodied so that we can feel what's behind all that stuff and see in new ways. Um, so your, your practices these days, do you do like daily practices, Yash, like yoga and mindfulness, meditation, things like this yourself, or is it, that has not been much of your, your, your journey? No, in India, I had a really good, authentic, high self-realized teacher, non-commercial. And we, that's why I went to find one after three days. I'm like, I'm leaving. This is a, this place is insane. I went to Rishikesh and yeah, it was not what my fantasy projected it was going to be. There was a meditation place on every corner. It's like in Thailand, there's a massage place on every corner, you know, I'm like, oh man, this place is commercial. And uh, it was just by grace. I called Saturday, my travel agent at the time, we used travel agents. And she said, you have to wait till Monday. And I said, oh God. And then I, got, I, w I was super thirsty because it was hot as hell out and I'm ticking. Everyone's staring at me because, you know, I'm a foreigner in India. And I went to this internet shop and I drank some water and I, they, they asked, what are you doing? I said, yeah, I just, I was going to look for a teacher, but uh, man, I'm in the wrong place. He says, actually, I know somebody and uh, he won't see just anybody and right when he said that i'm like oh shit really that's the person i want to meet <laughs> yeah and, yeah and so then i met him and then yeah he taught me authentic yoga and at that time i was using yoga as a a means to get somewhere so do i do yoga now i still do yoga now in the morning um but i do it because i enjoy doing it it feels good it's you know, it, I like that saying, what you're looking for, you're already looking from. Anything that this human construct does, it's happening in the consciousness that I am. And that's not a poetic thing. It's just the truth. There's always awareness of everything that I'm doing. Even when if I'm going to sit and I try to meditate, that's happening inside consciousness. Consciousness isn't meditating. It doesn't have a body. So that's my point. But I like doing the yoga because it gives a sense of balance to the body. It calms the nervous system down and um, it's healthy. You know, a meditation practice. I do a check in meditation. Even as I'm talking with you, I check in as much as I can and just again, self remember the consciousness that I am to give some attention to that. And as I'm talking, there's something that's not talking. The talking's happening inside what I really am. So there's a constant kind of remembrance of that every moment I can remember. So that's my that's my main practice. But sometimes I'll have a longer sit down meditation just because I feel to. It's, but again, I'm not. It's not a sweaty um, regimental practice anymore. That has its place, but no, now I don't do that. As you as you were sharing, then I was reminded of. Yeah, the intertwined practice that I guess I do in everyday life, uh, similar to yourself there as you were sharing, is the is the groundedness of being here. And I do this a lot. And I I spend a lot of time as I'm sharing or talking with another human being or going about life, trying to bring my awareness, my thought, my my thinking, my focus into the root of my being, into like into my body, my feet, the space just beneath my feet, the sense of like gravity. I do this a lot. And I'd say this is intertwined within the, the breathing and the breath work that I do much of my life. Just being aware of ah, the breath, because I can feel there's a lot of energy moving between us in this conversation. I can even feel like, quite, like I feel a lot coming up in me, which is a beautiful thing. Like it's really it's so good meeting somebody who's been through yeah, I know. Stuff. I share a lot of this stuff on YouTube, similar to yourself, where you should, you've got three channels and you share a lot of this stuff and meeting somebody else who's, who's been on a similar path is, is kind of rare here with Ticks and Tourette's. And, I know, I and, know. And, 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 and so let me tune into the truth of the words that I'm speaking next. Yeah, and finishing off what I was just sharing then, coming, coming down into the body, feeling into the body, to me has been saving grace is the words that are coming to me. I know, so I, didn't I, know, I can tell in, in your videos. Yeah, that, that's real. That's your, yeah, that's, uh, that's your way in, you know, it's clear. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> because the, the consciousness which you were sharing about moments ago, the consciousness that we which we all are, which is the the thing, like this holographic projection, the physical world, this body, this is all the energy of consciousness. And I, or we could say the energy of God or the energy of like that that 
universe thing that the word you know we've had thousands and thousands of different words for linear for as long as humans have existed right but in the society today there's a lot of taboo with that word it's like god ugh, you know god oh, no. reality, all this no, ugh, no but but beyond the indoctrinations of the religious systems there is just this thing that we are sure. in, right which is which is true it's here <laughs> and this is yeah and it- Everybody has their, because the, this play is so differentiated. There's so many, it's so versatile and there's different characters and temperaments and constitutions. Like some people, maybe they're more visual. They're going to find their way in through, through visual and others through breathing, others through, you know, you feel your hands. Okay. You notice the energy in your hands and you move down, you know, and then people like me, i um, I just, I feel this presence. I just bring my attention to this, this presence. It's like you switch everything off just for a second. There's something left you can't switch off. There's like this vibration of existence. So I just put my attention there. So the, we, we just have to find what, what's your way in, you know? And um, yeah. Yes, to finding the way in, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. we are so different. So I was a designer, right? I lived as a designer for, years mm-hmm. I never had a well I wouldn't say I have a, a a visual third eye or imagination you know a lot of people when they close their eyes they have pictures and symbols and colors and like moving images there was this one time in London I met a witch and she could replay whole movies that she'd watched the day before in her head and I'm yeah. like how'd you do that because when I close my eyes it's just pitch black it's just emptiness it's just just empty, empty black void. Um, and, and I was always very confused when school teachers used to tell me, yeah, just picture this in your imagination. I'm like, what are you talking about? I can't picture things in my imagination. I didn't yeah. get that, right? I didn't yeah. get So the, the system which I was brought in, I couldn't relate. I, know. I was I know. body, very sensory yeah. here, so overstimulated with my body. The, yeah. the education system, which is very in the mind, never connected yeah. to it. So it did, I I know. didn't do well. I didn't do I well, know. you know? I know. Yeah. yeah. No, it's a tough... <laughs> this time and age, man, there's no joke. Like you, This is like special forces stuff. Like to sign up and incarnate as a human during this time and then try to realize our true nature. So, yeah, this is no joke. I mean, this, the cards are really stacked against us, so to speak, you know? Because there's just so much misinformation and misnomers and illusion out there, and and just constant ego per- perpetuation, and just the un the unreal is so pronounced uh, everywhere you go. So, yeah, even in the spiritual field, I mean, you can even say especially in the spiritual, field, you know, which makes it it's like Jesus. Where can I go? Like, where is truth? <laughs> you know, and then somebody, and then when they oh, it's right here. It's like, yeah, yeah, okay, but goddamn, you know, like, like <laughs> you know, like some, some spiritual person gives some smart answer, and then and then later you'll see his girlfriend broke up with them, and then he's he's a mess. I thought I thought everything's just a play, man. What happened? You know, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's easy to talk this stuff, but it's another thing, as you mentioned five minutes ago, you want to be one with your words. That was good. I, I caught that. That's me too. Yeah, me. that's the most important thing. I don't want to speak um, about something that I'm not actually embodying. That's, um, yeah, doesn't feel right. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah, the truth can't be found out there. You know, it, it's in it's in our own compass, isn't it? Like you have your truth, I have my truth, and there's places where they meet, and it meets, of course, between us. But there's it's changing and shifting. That movement is changing and shifting as reality changes. And we could say there is an absolute truth, but it's very difficult to communicate an absolute truth verbally. It's just a knowingness. And oh yeah, it's like, knowingness. I yeah. Can't communicate that intellectually, you know. Like, no. It doesn't no for me it's it's a it's like a place like where am i speaking from it's that it's some kind of like are we speaking from this this place this non-ego you know consciousness place now our words might be different and they might even uh, diametrically oppose each other but yet the space we're speaking from we, we can tell it, it's pretty much um if it's honest that will be the same you know Ooh, i feel that 
Nice, <laughs> nice space, nice transmission, Yash. Um, so, I mean, cool to ask uh, in this moment, like for those that might watch this video on one of your channels or my channel, like at some point in the future, um, what do we want to share? Is there anything like we want to like, you know, at this stage, mm. if they're in the depth of the ticking and the ticks and they're looking for a way out and like we're talking about the spiritual stuff, but what can we I know what's bring, practical? Bring it, yeah, bring something down in info info. And what might you share in this moment for that? First thing, there has to be a strong inner passion. That, that's what I had my whole life that a lot of people I see they don't, they don't have. I could never be okay. Some people are just okay in public, twitching and ticking and ticking, and, and, and they're like, this is just who I am. I accept it. And yeah, if I could have done that, and I'm not, I'm not knocking those people. I just, I guess it wasn't my destiny. I could never accept that. I just couldn't. And that drove me to try to get some balance, you know. Um, so, but that inner passion is the key. But that can't be created. I just had it. I didn't make myself have it or choose to have it. I had it. So let's assume they have inner passion to really get well, which they're not going to be many, you know, out of thousands, maybe they'll, I don't know, they won't be many. I just, that's not what I've seen, especially with this level of chronic uh, neurological problems, they they just don't think it's possible, but let's assume they think it's possible. Um, the, the best things that I know is what I shared, the, the semen retention, the healthy, really easy to digest foods and structuring your life style and habits in a way that doesn't cause stress. You're going to, if one starts doing that, you're going to be, you're going to see the own evidence in yourself. That has to first click. It's, it's okay. You can do something that somebody that you trust says to do. It's fine. But ultimately you have to really know that it works and you have to feel it in your blood. If you're really feeling that, then, um, then keep going. Or if you want to reach out and, and, and get more private guidance, that's fine. Or, but those are the only tools that I know. I don't know really anything else. And then that coupled, I also do do what you, um, uh, like if there's tension in the neck, see, it depends on the moment. Consciousness has to guide me. <laughs> you see, it's paradoxical. Sometimes if I'll try to, like if, if the tension will be in the neck and the neck wants to turn, and then I say, okay, I'm going to relax the neck. Sometimes that can also actually create more stress. It depends on the moment. Other times it works. It's like, it's like I imagine they're just kind of like clouds or soft pillows and then something relaxes. Mm. Another time, maybe I just need to lay down. I just need to lay down and just chill and get grounded again or go for a walk or, you know, intuition has to activate. This is the saving grace. And I have to listen to it instead of a mind construct. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what I mean. Like, there's not a recipe. You see, like, if we want to be an auto mechanic, we can go to school and there's things we can learn and then we'll know how to fix a car. But this stuff we're talking about, and it's really hard. I can't really give a, an exact recipe because it's, 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 it's like an evolutionary thing. It's, it's evolving and it's individual. And, you know, what's true in this moment, it might change a little bit in the next moment. And I can only give... Um, kind of general things like like what I gave about those tools. Yeah, I, I hear this. I love how you got to the intuition side of it and like yeah. listening to yourself. And, and it's so important. Like if we got so stuck into our mind and we're thinking and rationalizing and planning and organizing and preparing and reminiscing and blah, 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 right? Like we've forgotten to listen to something deeper. We've forgotten to listen to our heart, to our intuition, to that subtle and softer and gentler voice that knows that I'm doing this thing and it's not good for me. That knows yeah. that oh, I'm doing this, but oh, something doesn't feel right. And it's that something that doesn't feel like a something that's behind all the mind that's gentle and soft, which can guide us out of this condition. I truly and deeply believe that. And yeah, the, the, the tools that and the practices that I have weaved into my life now regularly yoga mindfulness breath work 
those things regularly get me to quiet the mind and listen. And then yeah. when I know that intuitive, what well, do this thing now, try this thing now, go yeah. here now, speak to this person now. It's like when you reached out on YouTube, you're like, let's, why don't we have a chat? I'm like, I was a full body, yes, like yeah. this, this felt right. And yeah. you say yes, because we have that inner compass, don't we? We yeah. do. And if only we listen more to that, then all chronic conditions for anybody and everybody goes because you, your body, your spirit, your heart knows how to move beyond the secular nature of our neurotic sort of like diseased nature, which we've got caught up in in the world today. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and even if it doesn't go away, you see, this is another important thing. Hmm. I can't, also, I have to also not be so obsessed with, oh, is it still here? And oh, I turn my neck. Oh, no. You know, I got to relax a little bit. Like, it's like, okay, whatever, you know. And while at the same time, I'm trying to stay balanced and let go of it. But if things flare up, like, I, I got to give space for that. And, and, and this, this, what we're doing, you see, it's, it's not a, it's not a, this is a lifestyle, like this is a way of living, like what I'm doing, Tourette's or no Tourette's, like this is what I do. It has to be that too for a person, like they can't do, look at this as like, I'm going to do these things for a while to get rid of the Tourette's so then I can go back to my life. Yeah, that, um, that won't work either. And more important than being totally cured or free of no ticks, most important is to not be emotionally or spiritually debilitated by the ticks, you see, not to identify with this movement or some pain and say, oh, well, this, this means I'm not spiritual, or this means that I'm not, I'm not, I'm not as worthy as I, no, it doesn't mean anything to, to somehow, it's like do the impossible, allow the imbalance to take place, but yet at the same time, you're not, it doesn't affect you emotionally, you don't identify with it, you know. That's a that's a super important thing uh, for me. Yeah, I hear that for sure. Yeah, that self judgment and I should be somewhere else than other than where I'm at. You know, yeah. perfection. I need to get better. I need to do this. It's like, yeah, it's nice to it, it's it's nice to have uh, some sort of that willpower inside. Of course, that's important, but not sure. so much that it's like I need it so badly that it's causing more stress. <laughs> exactly. I <laughs> mean. The balance yeah. of all things in it's life. Balance. balance. It's oh. like I've yeah. set the intention to get better and move beyond this thing and this condition. And many people that are going to be watching this now would have that intention or would like that intention or maybe setting that intention as they're watching this right now, right? We can say that. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, okay, but don't get stressed about it. Allow it to happen. Trust. Trust. Uh, seek. Explore. Open. And yeah. And be committed, like be committed as well to the practice of doing something on a daily basis that quietens the mind, looks after yourself, yeah. says no to stress, that that brings you back to you, things like this. Yeah. Yeah. And if you got to take a couple of years off your life, if you're allowed to do that and get rid of the big money making job and just take some time to, to just get acquainted with yourself and apply this, this is this is really important too. This has to be the most important thing in one's life, like I said. And yeah, it, that really would help if you could just be free from stress out in the world. And if you're, you're in a financial state where you could just take a year off and go somewhere and chill and really, that would be huge. That's, that would be really important. I got much better when I left America. That's all I know. I just started to get better. You know, I was too much. Uh, <laughs> I needed to leave, leave there and then I could get deprogrammed and, and deconditioned of all this garbage that I learned somehow growing up and all, all that stuff you know um, yeah we gotta we gotta come back to our natural mind which is just clean it doesn't it's not associated with all these things that society and parents put on us because that that causes a lot of stress too <laughs> yeah 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 i'm um being reminded at the moment of maybe there's some parents of kids that have ticks that might might be watching this recording at some point is research because they really want their their young and all their child to get better who started with this condition and then maybe seven eight nine ten or something like this and 
Man, that's easier. You know, I'm telling if I would have had the program I had now at that age, oh, please. Uh, yeah, you, if you, yeah, if they start on this natural, healthy lifestyle at, <laughs> yeah, a preteen or a teen, oh, you're going to have a, an easier way to go because the habits and grooves are less dug in. It, it, it won't take much. Yeah, that's just what it is. I, I remember, I felt like there were times in my teens I could have been cured. I was going to uh, 12 step meetings, I was exercising, I had a really healthy life. And I was like, I'm not taking it all, man. This is awesome. But then I'd get back into some debaucherous shit again. And then I would uh, lose myself and then discontinue with that over the years. The next thing you know, I had a hell of a time pulling myself out of it. So, yeah. I'm reminded of where addictions come from, right? And quite often science these days tells us addiction comes from some sort of lack of connection, right? And whether that's lack of connection with others in the world today, friends, family, society, community, or whether it's connection with the deep place inside of ourselves, spirit, heart, which we've talked a lot about in this, in this, in this, in this conversation, right? It's connection. And then if we don't have that connection, the addictions take over us. And whether the addictions happen in physical things like alcohol or drugs or sex or, you know, ejaculation, mm -hmm. things like this, you know, or whether it's through the body and the ticking and the moving, movement, yeah. like it right. doesn't matter, but it's, it's, it's an addiction, which is, there's lack of connection there, lack of it is. being connected emotionally with the world, with yourself, right? And that that there is an important reflection, really important reflection. Mm. Yeah, for sure. We, you know, we can have mild ticks, like, okay, but then when it starts getting really severe, yeah, that's pretty much an indicator. Like you said, I'm I'm uh, I'm, I'm disconnected. And I'm, I'm stuck in my mind and, and then that causes me stress and I'm trying to tick it out and yeah, it becomes an addiction totally. Yeah. All righty. All right. So we're coming up to an hour. I guess we can gently slow down. It's been like yeah. a phenomenal conversation from my side. Yeah. I've enjoyed this so much, Yash. I've enjoyed this so much. Thank you for reaching out, man. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah. Any last things that you want to you want to share to me or to anybody that watches this, you feel? Hmm. No, I think we said it all. It's just if you feel these words land in you, then you can uh, reach out and, um, you know, and, and contact us. You use us both or use one or, you know, as you feel, it doesn't really matter. But um, there is a way to be free of, of the torture that these things cause in a natural way. You know, this is the main, the main message. Now, it, it may not be easy, but there's a way, there's a way to do it. The, the grace, the universal grace can, there's nothing it can't do, especially if your, your motives are pure and you honestly, you want to, we gotta be willing to give ourselves up, like totally, like to, to receive some, some real we need a, and I needed a spiritual intervention I needed a shift in my consciousness I, because this stuff was too big I couldn't do anything with it but to get a, a, a true for grace to come in I gotta not be there I gotta get out of my own way so that then grace can actually do something miraculous if as long as I still think there's moves I can make and and uh, you know my ego's running the show then I'm I'm technically blocking this grace from coming in so yeah, that's oh, my final word. <laughs> that's some powerful words, man. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. And yes, yes, I, I, I can't add to that. You just said it. You said it. <laughs> you said it so beautifully. What are the names of your three channels, Yash? Um, so the Tourette channel is Awakening Through Pain. Yeah, I changed it recently. So Awakening Through Pain. The other channel, semen retention, is beyond the alchemy. And then the spiritual channel is spiritual renaissance. Okay. So I'll yeah. put links below the video on YouTube as well so people can get to your videos. I'll do that. Yeah. And, and I'm going to put yours. Yeah. Just send me the recording and I'll do the same. Awesome. Awesome. 
Okay, well, let's close up there then. Thank you so much for this chat, Yash. I deeply enjoyed this. Um, and it's so nice sharing with somebody that's been through the same thing. And um, yes. I hope those of you that have watched this have really enjoyed it and got something out of it. So yeah, drop drop some comments in the video below, not to do the markety thing, but like I, I, I get the impression you've got to do it on YouTube these days, so I'm starting to do it. Um, yeah, and let us know like, what you took out of this conversation. What you yeah. what you felt, what you thought, any like extended or extra questions you have for either of us or both of us, like, yeah. And um, who knows? Maybe we'll do a follow up at some point in the future with uh, and go deeper. We we'll, let's see, let's see. Alrighty, all right. Much love, Yash. Um, take it easy, and uh, yeah, chat to you soon. Okay, I'll take care. Ciao, ciao.